Hi everyone, and welcome back to PIA's The Break. Today, we're um, the video is going to focus on a legislative priority of PI New Jersey. So, here to talk about step down provisions is our Director of Government and Industry Affairs, Brad Latchett. So, Brad, I'll turn it over to you. Hey everybody, welcome back, or welcome to the first time. The first time you're watching. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on one of uh, New Jersey's legislative priorities, and that is the step down provision. Um, for the uninitiated, a step-down provision is a form of coverage reduction in a personal auto policy. Um, what it does, it acts to reduce the coverage in a policy from whatever the limits are. So let's say they are 100, 300. Um, the step-down would reduce that coverage down to the state minimum. So if we're talking about New Jersey, that's 1530 um, in certain circumstances. So when there's a business use of a vehicle, um, that would be something like delivering um, a pizza or a salad or maybe an insurance policy, um, that sort of thing. Not so much uh, driving for a ride hailing company or something like that, or um, even um, commercial delivery for Uber Eats or um, Amazon delivering. That would be outside of, of this step down provision. But we're talking about business use here, talking about more, I guess, um, incidental business use. Um, the other scenario where this would pop up is another form of step down um, is with UM UIM coverage uh, for permissive users. So for those not named in the policy, um, for example, if you have a family member who, it does, who lives outside of the home um, and they were to borrow a vehicle, uh, that person, well, permissive user is not a named driver on the policy. Um, the coverage, if they were to be an accident, could step down depending on the circumstances if the UM UIM came into play. Um, I use that example because that was a recent example in a recent court case uh, that was just concluded in New Jersey where a step down provision was held to be um, permissible um, and it actually reduced the coverage that was available to basically a daughter of the policyholder when she was driving the vehicle. Um, so that's when we'll see step downs, generally speaking, in these policies. So what are the problems with this? Uh, there's three problems. Um, step down provisions are inconsistently used and applied. Uh, so there are some carriers that use them and there are some carriers that don't. Um, it's sometimes difficult to tell which ones do and which ones don't. And even then, when they are in policies, they're inconsistently enforced, um, which leads to kind of a double whammy of is it there and is, is it going to be enforced? Um, this leads to an issue of policyholders maybe driving around with less coverage than they think, right? They've purchased a policy with $100,000 worth of coverage. Um, they turn their keys over to their daughter. They assume that that $100,000 worth of coverage still applies um, and then are surprised when it does not. Um, that then leads to issues with producers, um, E&O issues in particular. Now you may be wondering why. There was a, a court decision um, in the early 2000s uh, that held that producers uh, basically have a duty to inform their clients about these step-down provisions. It was actually in the dicta of a uh, decision on about commercial uh, step-downs. Dicta is a legal, is basically language and opinion that's not um, important to the case at hand, but still holds weight to a certain extent. Um, that decision, um, which was on commercial step-down, said that producers had a, a duty to advise their clients of these step-down provisions. So if there is a step-down provision in a policy and a producer does not uh, advise their client, they could be uh, setting themselves up for E&O issues. So the solution here, um, PIA is, uh, has proposed legislation that would ban um, step-down provisions in, in personal auto policies. Um, Specifically, it would prohibit reduction of policy limits, regardless of whether a driver is a named insured or permissive user. Um, that would be a, an account for also the business use of a policy as well. Um, this uh, legislation would still allow certain exclusions. So if, if a, a carrier was to exclude for commercial use, they could still do so, provides flexibility in that re uh, regard, but would um, basically ensure that the policyholder had the coverage that they thought they had when they hand the keys off to somebody they think should be covered. Um, that legislation, we're at the beginning of a new legislative session uh, with New Jersey, a two-year legislative session has been introduced in the assembly, assembly excuse me, at 1761. You can uh, uh, click on the link there and take a look at it. Um, so where do we stand here? Uh, how to join our advocacy efforts. So we'll, we'll be, as I mentioned, this is the beginning of the session PA, 
will be doing a lot of advocacy work on this issue. So watch your inbox for calls to action. Um, if you run into step down provisions, let us know. Send an email to government affairs. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, these provisions are sometimes inconsistent. Uh, so please, if you see them, let us know. It's always good to keep a track of them so we, we, you know, we know. Um, check out our publications for any new updates. Um, and then if you're you know, interested in doing um, local visits, contact us as well. Um, and then of course, if you have any questions, you can reach out. So with that, I will turn it back over to Claire for any questions you might have. Yeah, you just mentioned that it's the beginning of the New Jersey uh, legislative session. I was wondering, what's the t how long does that last and what's the time frame for trying to get legislation through in the session? Yeah, great question. So uh, New Jersey has a two-year legislative session, and unlike some other states with a two-year legislative session, it kind of runs like a marathon. It starts in January and they keep going. They never adjourn. Once they keep going, keeps going. They, then they conclude on you know, January 13th of one year and they pick up on a new session the next day, literally. Um, so legislative session is always going. Um, I know they do take a little bit of breaks in between, but they never conclude. So we are at the beginning um, and the legislative, uh, so legislation can kind of move in an unpredictable way in fits and starts. So uh, you never know when, when something's gonna pick up uh, steam. Hopefully this one picks up steam early. Yeah, and you mentioned that the um, duty of the standard for which producers have to um, are held accountable to sharing information with their clients uh, can be inconsistent. Is PA doing anything about that? That is a, a great question, Claire. Uh, that is another one of our legislative priorities, and we are going to be doing, we have a break on that actually um, as well. So if anybody's interested in that, they can check out that in the links below, actually, I would think. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everybody.